In this radically changed and changing world, we must shift and lift our game, and we must do so with a sense of urgency. There is no place for vanilla. There is no place for business as usual. We must be future ready. We must be agile and we must be business fit. Hello, my name is Judy Reynolds. Thank you for joining me here today. I am the founder of Opening Gates and the designer of the 12 week business fit challenge a powerful online program for entrepreneurs who are committed to playing a bigger game and challenging their status quo. I've been empowering entrepreneurs to success for over 30 years now, and I'm on a mission to make sure that you too have the support, insights and tools you'll need to transform your business and your life. Yes, both business and life. Winning in life and winning in business are not mutually exclusive. In fact, living a wonderful dynamic life is a prerequisite for business success. If you want to have a high impact, more profitable business that doesn't suck the life out of you, if you want to win in business and in life, or to play an even bigger game in your market, then it's time to get business fit. I have the coveted business fit formula and I'm going to share it with you along with other key insights from the 12 week business fit challenge. You are about to find out how to use this unique formula to really ramp up your profitability and to do so without compromising your values and without working longer and harder. You will also learn how to calculate the most powerful KPI ever and how it will shift your focus. First up though, here is my first gift to you. Free access to my business fitness assessment tool. Just by completing the assessment, you will identify gaps and highlight the opportunities for upside in your business. It will only take a few minutes to complete and you will receive an instant rating. This business fit formula is a game changer and it is designed to enhance the businesses and lives of entrepreneurs, emerging, established and retiring. The life stage of the business is irrelevant. It works for someone with an idea, in startup phase, someone who is seeking profitable growth or an entrepreneur planning on selling their business for value. The power of the formula is not limited by geography either. It has a global application. There are some really scary statistics out there which I believe can be turned around when entrepreneurs get the support they need. The historical failure rate of businesses and startups is expected to continue with around 60% failing within their first three years and 20% of small businesses failing in year one. So clearly doing business in a profitable, sustainable way isn't a piece of cake. There is work to be done and there is much to be learned. One of the main reasons for this failure rate is the lack of access to business smarts across all of business. This is information that addresses all of the foundations of business in an integrated, intentional way and which reflects the reality of being in business. The focus must be holistic and we must work on each foundation in order to design a business model that is profitable, sustainable and fit for the purpose of enabling you, the entrepreneur, to live your best life now and into the future. These are the 10 foundations, mindset, accountability, planning for life, planning for wealth, planning for business, growth, leadership, innovation, teamwork and systems. There are workouts dedicated to each of these foundations in the 12 week business fit challenge. The business fitness assessment, which you have free access to, also addresses each of these foundations with questions relating to the critical must-haves which are often neglected. In the excitement of launching a new business, the emerging entrepreneur may not pay enough attention to some of the less visible yet super important concepts critical to sustainable profitability. And this is understandable, we don't know what we don't know. In a state of overwhelm, we can reach out for those you know, bright shiny products which promise the world but have a limited focus and address one small part of the business model and the business engine. Don't be fooled into thinking success in business and life is simply having a great product or knowing how to generate leads or having a wonderful social media presence. Yes, these things matter. However, success in business and life requires a more holistic focus. 
We must pay attention to all of the foundations of business. These foundations form the foundation on which your business is built and through which you live your best life. These foundations are integrated. One leverages off the other. In isolation, they carry less power. Are you an established entrepreneur whose business is no longer as future ready as it could be? Perhaps your business model, which has worked for years, is now not producing your desired outcomes. Is your offer less relevant to your traditional market? Or perhaps you want to mix it up with a renewed focus on growth. Again, this requires a holistic approach. Are you at the stage where you're planning to retire from the business game and fund your retirement with the proceeds from the sale of your business? Many have been surprised to learn that this business that they have put their heart and soul into for years is worthless or worth seriously less than what they need to retire in the way they anticipated. Times have changed. Potential buyers are choosing to start up from scratch rather than wrangling in an existing business into a shape that reflects their vision and their requirements. The seller may feel like they are selling their baby while the buyer is buying something completely different. They may be buying a trading footprint, access to key employees, or access to a strategic customer. So they are valuing something entirely different. Preparing a business for sale with a mind to maximizing the sales price also requires a holistic approach. It is the foundations all operating in sync, which forms the business model, which generates the profit or the income stream that the buyer is buying. These foundations must be constantly and consistently reviewed in order for the business model to remain relevant, future ready and saleable. This holistic approach is the first part of the business fit formula. Here is my second offer to you. Please take the opportunity to enroll in the 12 week business fit challenge at our one-time VIP virtual expo price for just $749. This program is designed specifically for entrepreneurs like you. Use this link or scan the QR code to learn more. The business will never outperform the weakest link and the weakest link will effectively limit what is possible for you in life. If your mindset is wanting, if your leadership style is questionable, if your systems aren't ready for increased volumes of transactions, if your team is not engaged, if you can't articulate who your ideal client is, and we could go on and on, this will impact your profitability. There is no doubt about that. A brilliant product and real passion for the difference it will make is a great start, but it won't be enough. As we go about enhancing and building the foundations, we must do so with a common point of reference. A scattergun approach to this will create chaos down the line. This common point of reference is the next part of the business fit formula. The business fit formula is likely to be different to anything you have ever seen before because it turns traditional business strategizing on its head. The formula centers on the concept of a business being fit for purpose. This concept goes way beyond, say, being fit for the purpose of selling widgets or entering global markets or being a leader in your industry. There is something more at the core of this concept, something far more personal. The business fit formula applies no matter what size your business is, what life stage it is in, where it's operating or what industry it's in. So what is fit for purpose? Let's consider this scenario. You've decided you need to get fit and you consult a personal trainer. Your personal trainer will design a fitness program for you based on what it is you want to be fit for. Being fit for the purpose of running an ultra marathon requires a different program to that required to be fit enough to play a social game of tennis. Understanding the purpose behind the need to be fit is critical to the fitness program and how the end product, you, the athlete, turns out. This same reasoning applies to the process of designing a business that is fit for purpose. Your business must be fit for the purpose of enabling the plan you have for your life. 
It must be designed in a way that allows you to play the role you want to play in the business and to generate the profit you need to provide for this life you have planned. So this is where it gets interesting. This is where we turn business strategizing on its head. Too often, strategic decisions in business are made in isolation without reference to how that decision might impact the plan the entrepreneur has for his or her life. This shifts the power to the business away from the owner who is effectively left with the dregs. The owner's life and role in the business is determined and often compromised by these strategic decisions. Life becomes a poor second. One of the most powerful things that we can do is to switch this up and put life first. Yes, the business fit formula requires that we change the point of reference in decision making. Your life plan must be your first point of reference. Before you decide to take strategic action, you must first ask yourself whether this action or this strategy will result in your business being in a better position to enable your best life both now and into the future. Of course, this means that you must have clarity around what your best life looks like, not just now, but from the perspective of you're sitting in your rocking chair, looking back over your life with pride and joy. Invest the time to design your life plan, decade by decade, year by year. The hardest part is getting started, but once you do, it will be both enlightening and exciting. The 12 week business fit challenge provides a template to do this work and takes you through this process step by step. Remember, we're creating a life plan. It is a plan, not a promise. This plan cannot be set in stone. It is based on what you know today and it is relevant until something even more exciting turns up, at which time you need to upgrade it. Always be on the lookout for new opportunities to expand and upgrade the plan you have for your life. We're putting life first, where it belongs. And then we go a step further. This life plan you have designed needs to be financed. We need to have the funds available for you to live today and invest for tomorrow. If your business is the sole source of these funds, then the business must generate enough profit to deliver on this plan. So now we have life, wealth, profit. Very powerful indeed. We design our life plan and we create a wealth plan and then we calculate the desired profit. So profit funds your wealth plan, enabling your life plan. We've repositioned your life plan as the first point of reference in strategic decision making. And we have also repositioned profit as an enabler. Profit enables you to create the wealth and to provide the income that you need to live the life you planned. These repositionings are really powerful distinctions and the reason why the business fit formula gets such extraordinary results. Traditionally, and very simply, profit is what is left after deducting expenses from sales. It is a result. The amount of the profit is determined by the level of sales generated and the expenses incurred. Under this traditional model, how much profit we produce determines how we can live our lives both now and into the future. Our life plan has to be designed within the constraints of what this quantity of profit will allow. When we look at profit as an enabler, we take a different point of view. The quantity of the enabler is determined by how we plan to live now and into the future, not as a result of sales, less expenses. As an enabler, profit provides the funds required for the business owner to finance business growth and debt reduction, to have income to live now, and income to invest for later. As an enabler, profit takes on new meaning. We have shifted the focus beyond profit as a result to what profit enables. The desired or required profit must be sufficient to enable us to live the life we aspire to, both now and into the future. Profit funds our wealth plan, which enables your life plan. We're connecting the dots and working from your life plan as the ultimate point of reference to your wealth plan and then to profit, the enabler. We've designed our life plan, created our wealth plan, and then calculated the amount of desired profit. Now we're ready to reverse engineer from profit, our enabler, to sales, and then from sales to leads. 
So we need to know how many leads we need to generate the sales that we need, to produce the profit that we need, to fund the wealth that we need, to finance the life we aspire to. This is very powerful. We've connected the dots between leads and life. We now have the basis on which to design a business model that will enable our best life. We know the numbers and we can create the process and develop the strategies so that those numbers show up. This is our common point of reference when we are building and enhancing the foundations of our business. There is another really remarkable benefit, an energy flow. We're taking the big energy of living our best life into the activities of business. I have proven time and time again that when a business is fit for purpose, the energy lists, the commitment to do what it takes is enhanced and the outcomes are boosted. The 12-week Business Fit Challenge takes you through this process step by step. It is via this process that you will calculate the most powerful KPI ever. And this is the most powerful KPI ever. It pulls it all together. It connects the dots. Knowing how many leads you need to live the life you aspire to makes the activity of delivering the leads very personal. If we don't do what it takes to get the leads, if we don't generate the sales we need to produce the desired profit, then we're effectively going to have to compromise our life plan. We're going to have to pare back our lives somewhat, and that's really personal. Connecting the dots between the activities of business and living our best lives brings a real sense of urgency to doing what it takes. This is an important part of the power of this business fit formula. Of course, there is a chance that the sales and the profit that you need to fund your wealth plan and finance your life plan is well in excess of your current reality. So we may have to step it up over time. Again, knowledge is power. Keep in mind that small tweaks to different KPIs often deliver really significant increases. So don't give up on your desired profit before you put the effort into beefing up your growth strategies. The 12-week Business Fit Challenge takes you through a process to do this with a focus on profitable growth. I am sharing the Business Fit formula with you along with key concepts and a high-level view of the processes behind it because I want you to know that having a more profitable, impactful business that enables your best life is not a pipe dream. There is a logical process which will make all the difference, which will make what might seem impossible, possible. If you want more detail, more meat around the bones, the step-by-step -step guide, then sign up for the 12-week Business Fit Challenge and join other challenges doing what it takes. So let's recap on what we've covered so far. The Business Fit formula requires that we take a holistic approach and addresses all of the foundations of business. Remember, focusing on one or two foundations will produce a less than optimum result. In isolation, the foundations carry less power. As we build and enhance these foundations, we do so with the common focus of being fit for purpose. By fit for purpose, we mean the business is designed in a way that enables the entrepreneur to live the life they aspire to, both now and into the future. This is why we switch it up and focus on life first. The business must be designed in a way that it produces the profit that we need to fund the wealth that we need to live our best life. We also shifted how we see profit from a result to an enabler. Our profit had to be sufficient to fund business growth, debt reduction, income for living now, and investment for living later. With this number in mind, we reverse engineered to sales and then to leads. We connected the dots between the activities of business generating leads with living a wonderful dynamic life. It brings a real sense of urgency, high energy and a commitment to really deliver. And because there is a clear link to life, it's personal. And there we have it, the most powerful KPI ever. How many leads do you need to live the life you aspire to and to make the contribution you desire to? Now let's talk growth. Not growth for growth's sake, but profitable, sustainable growth. Growth is one of the foundations of business and a critical one. I have a theory that most theories to grow sales are way too complicated. It is simply a matter of doing four things better, getting better at marketing, selling, delivery, and service. Growth requires more qualified leads, better sales conversations, 
superior product delivery, and exceptional post-sales experience. I call this the business engine. Now let's take a look at each of the cylinders in this engine, marketing, selling, delivery, and service. As we break down the business engine, there is a perfect opportunity for you to rate your performance in each of these key areas. And in doing so, identify any opportunities for upside. The process of rating is really powerful and includes two steps. Step one is to rate yourself, to reflect and assess how well you are doing in a particular area. You could use a rating system like this continuum, starting from one, abysmal, to five, awesome. Let's say you're rating how well you do marketing and you've rated yourself a three. The next step is to come up with actions or strategies which would raise that rating. The first strategy or action might be to become clearer on your ideal client criteria. You might need to better understand where your qualified leads gather. It is important to be brutally honest with your ratings and to get curious and creative about how you might raise the rating. And then of course, you must follow through. Let's start with marketing. We measure how well you do marketing based on the number of qualified leads that are generated. Very simplistically, qualified leads are buyers who need what you sell and who can afford what you sell. They represent a potential ideal client. With this knowledge, you are less likely to waste marketing time and dollars yelling at a market that neither needs nor can afford what you sell. You will need to be very clear on who your buyer is, why they will buy what you sell, how they want to buy, where they are, and how you will attract their attention. Generating leads for leads sake is hard work and erodes profitability unnecessarily. Heads up, buyer behavior has changed significantly over the last two years. If you haven't already adapted your prospect and client engagement process to accommodate these changes, then please take the time to do so. We must stay relevant. The key to a more profitable sale is a more qualified lead. The best way to know if a marketing campaign is successful or not is to measure the actual outcomes against your desired outcomes. If you want to get serious about something, put a number on it. Put KPIs in place before you finalize the design of the campaign. KPIs not only measure the success of the campaign, they also bring a laser-like focus to the design process. Without clarity around outcomes upfront, the marketing campaign will be less directional and the outcomes will be what the outcomes will be. How do you rate? Now selling. Getting better at converting your qualified lead to a sale is a great growth strategy. Do you know what your conversion rate is? How effective are you at converting a lead to a sale? How many sales conversations do you need to have in order to get a sale? It is super important that you know these numbers. These numbers indicate how effective your sales activities are and where work needs to be done. If you engage in sales conversations with a thousand leads and a hundred of these leads buy, your conversion rate is 10%. Knowing this number allows you to consider what difference a strategy to increase this rate to say 20% might deliver. How many more sales would be generated? What would be the impact on profit? Knowing the numbers brings clarity and real meaning to a strategy like this. Your conversion rate will improve if your leads are more qualified, if the buying process is easy and there are fewer hoops to jump through, if you can articulate the value of your offer very clearly and in buyer speak, if you know how to build your buyer's appetite for what it is you sell, and if you ask for the sale, how do you rate? And delivery, what could you do to get better at delivering your service or product? Delivery is very much about delivering on your promise, both your brand promise and the promises you made during the sales process. You could ask yourself, how can I do more than I said I would do before I said I would do it? This does not mean that you add more value at high cost to you and erode profit. It does mean that you get creative and include an unexpected surprise, which has high perceived value to your buyer and a low cost to you. You want your client to come back and buy again and to spend more when they do. You want your client to be an advocate for you and to refer others. The KPIs which measure how well you do the delivery process include the frequency of sales per client. We want them to come back and shop again. 
the average dollar per sale, we want them to spend more when they do. The number of referrals, we want them to refer proactively. Do you have the systems in place to measure these KPIs? How do you rate? Now service. How can we get better at nurturing your client post-sale? How often have you experienced being courted madly leading up to a sale and once you agree to buy, it's all downhill from there? It is if you have no further value to the business until that is, they are looking to sell you something else. Strong relationships are the cornerstone of every growing business. If we neglect to build relationships with our clients or our potential clients, our prospects, then we will become a transaction and commodities based business and that puts us squarely in a highly competitive, often price driven, short term frenetic market. Building relationships increases your customers loyalty to you and your brand and they are more likely to go out and promote you to others, to be an advocate for your business. This is how momentum is built. A heads up, once you start building and nurturing relationships, don't stop. It must be a constant and consistent way of doing business in order to build and retain trust. Perceived indifference is one of the most common reasons given for clients stopping doing business with a supplier. Inconsistent ad hoc contact will not build strong relationships which create loyalty. What it will create is a state of confusion. The key is to build relationships based on authenticity. Do it because you believe you can make a positive difference. Be genuine, add value. Nurture to grow. If you aren't connecting with your customers, you can be assured that your competitors will be. So be there, be visible. How do you rate? You can have a super shiny marketing, selling, delivery and service model, but this business engine does not operate in a vacuum. There are two other key concepts that will impact the business engine's ability to constantly and consistently deliver profitable sales. That's brand promise and culture. The business engine is designed to deliver on your brand promise and to operate in alignment with your corporate culture. Your brand promise and your corporate culture should be intentionally designed to attract the right people and to stand out from your competitors. Your brand promise is a promise to your buyer with respect to how their experience with you and your business will be. As a buyer having engaged with your brand promise, I show up with an expectation around what it is you will deliver in terms of experience and product. It either resonates or it doesn't. As a prospect, I interact with your marketing collateral. It might be your website or your social media posts or a conversation with your marketing people. And based on that experience, I form an expectation around how the next steps, the next conversations might play out. The thing is, if my experience with other people in other divisions does not align with the brand promise, then I will be confused and a confused buyer will hesitate and will potentially move on to your competition. Our culture is a combination of behavioural norms, attitudes, values, how we do things around here, what's okay, what isn't, aspirations, our why and more. As with our brand promise, we can intentionally create a culture which attracts the right people. Your prospects and your customers will feel it and it will either feel right or not so. If the cultural experience differs as the customer makes their way through the business engine, interacting with different people, they will again be confused and again they will hesitate and potentially choose not to buy. How do you rate your brand promise and your culture? So let's recap. Here we have the prospect and the client's experience. A prospect engages with your marketing message. You have got their attention. They then agree to engage in a sales conversation. This lead or prospect is then converted to a sale and subsequently what is sold is delivered. The client is nurtured post sale and is delighted enough to come back and shop with you again. In summary, here are six ways to grow a business, all of which relate to the business engine. Generate more qualified leads and improve lead generation. Turn more leads into sales and up your conversion rate. Keep more clients from defecting to your competition and increase retention. Get clients to buy from you more often and increase transaction frequency. Encourage clients to spend more and increase the average sale. Encourage clients to proactively refer and increase referrals. If you want to get serious, put a number on it. 
So how well do you know your numbers? You must put a number on each of these strategies, numbers which will reflect how many leads you need to generate the sales that you need, to produce the profit that you need, to fund the wealth that you need to finance the life you aspire to. Yes, it's all interrelated. This is not a complex process. This is a logical sequence and it's best done one step at a time. Being able to see the impact tweaking these numbers have on profitability is super insightful. Worksheets and calculators are included in the 12 week business fit challenge to help you design your growth strategies and to compute the numbers so that you have valid KPIs to work towards. Firstly, thank you for spending this time with me. I appreciate that there has been a lot to take in. I promised that I wouldn't hold back, so I've shared a heap of really valuable information with you in just these last 30 minutes. It is important that you understand the power of taking a holistic view by addressing all of the foundations of business and doing so with a common point of reference. I want you to see the value in designing a business model which will deliver the lead that you need to generate the sales that you need, to produce the profit that you need, to fund the wealth that you need, to finance the life you aspire to. I want you to know how to calculate the most powerful KPI ever, the leads to life KPI. I also want to take some of the mystery out of the challenge of growing a business and to show you a multifaceted intentional approach which will reap rewards. With this in mind, I'm giving you access to a range of resources, links and offers which you can access through this web page. Here you will find the business fitness assessment link for you to complete your assessment and to leverage the insights. Seriously valuable downloadable resources which relate to different business foundations. You will also have the opportunity to enrol in the 12 week business fit challenge at our one time VIP virtual expo introductory offer of just $749. This program will seriously amplify what you've covered here today. So wrapping up, I urge you to give yourself permission to go make something important happen. Do work you're proud of, treat people with respect, make big promises and keep them, and ship your solutions out the door. Again, thank you and have a brilliant day.